From Tops comes the all-new digital card collecting app, free to download from iTunes or Google Play, Star Wars Card Trader. For the first time ever, collect and trade everything from legendary 1977 Star Wars cards to new cards featuring exclusive content from Star Wars Episode Seven: The Force Awakens. All from the comfort of your mobile devices, Star Wars Card Trader. These are the cards you're looking for. Listening to Coffee with Kenobi, you are. With Dan Z and Corey Club, the podcast you're looking for. This is. <laughs> yes. For an entire generation, people have experienced Star Wars the only way it's been possible on the TV screen. But if you've only seen it this way, you haven't seen it at all. This is the podcast you're looking for. We've been waiting for you. The force is strong here, even stronger than the coffee. At last, where have you been? Welcome to Coffee with Kenobi. Here are your hosts, Dan Z and Corey Club. Hi, I'm Michael Kogi, author of Empire of the Wolf and co-author of Star Wars Absolutely Everything You Need to Know. And you are listening to Coffee with Kenobi with Dan Z and Corey Club. This is a podcast you're looking for. DK Publishing recently released Star Wars Absolutely Everything You Need to Know. And the book is an awesome resource for Star Wars fans, as well as a must for trivia buffs. Michael is no stranger to Star Wars as an active writer for Star Wars Insider, as well as many of the junior novelizations. We are delighted to have him on to join us for a cup of coffee. Welcome, Michael. And by the way, I I have to say I am actually drinking a cup of coffee in my Star Wars Luke Skywalker Darth Vader mug, so I think Ah, it's quite appropriate. It's very appropriate. It's very appropriate. That seems like the perfect thing to have as a cup of coffee for this coffee chat. So how did you learn that you'll be working on Star Wars absolutely everything you need to know? Well, I've been writing Star Wars since, uh, I mean, for for a long, long time, as I like to say. Uh, I I started writing uh, for the Star Wars Adventure Journal for West End Games. I had been published in uh, Star Wars Adventure Journal number three. I I, I developed the... uh, the history and kind of the background for Bacta. That's the that's the healing liquid that, that Luke swims around in the rejuvenation tank. Sure. And uh, so my relationship with with Star Wars goes goes back a long time. Uh, and I, I mostly do fiction now, but uh, DK approached me uh, to to work on this book because they were looking for some writers, and uh, I said, "Hey, I've never done a DK book before, so I'd, I'd love to get a get a shot at doing one." And it, it was a great experience. It was uh, uh, a very enlightening and uh, educative experience too, because I had to go kind of go through the the, fr- the films uh, sometimes frame by frame to kind of figure out little things we could add to the book that people might not have noticed before. Um, the, the the book is very film and uh, television series dependent. You know, it doesn't use... We, we didn't really have the, the universe of legends to work with, so we just had the, the, uh, the, the new films, uh, the prequels, the original films, and also the animated series to really use as our basis. So uh, you were... Uh, you were searching for, for new tips and new bits of trivia that people haven't read before, and, and that, that was a challenge. It was also a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. It's really quite a joy to devour as well. So obviously you wrote this book with Adam Bray and Cole Horton, two guys that have also been on Coffee with Kenobi. And I was curious to know how the book was divided up and how much collaboration did you have with one another during the process? Well, the book was divided into fours, of course. Carrie Doherty uh, was another writer on the book, too. Yes. Uh, I, I actually was not aware of any other writer uh, on the book uh, when I was working on it. I was given a, a, uh, a map of the various spreads, and I was assigned you know, a quarter of the spreads. The spread is what they call a two-page uh, visual piece where you have to assemble all the information and I actually didn't know who else was working on the on the book until I think it was Star Wars Celebration and I found out Adam was on the book and as was Cole and Carrie so that was it was really nice I don't I don't usually ask too many questions I just try to do the work to the best of my ability and uh sure. and go from there absolutely well I mean just the excitement of writing on Star Wars which of course you're no stranger to but 
knowing that you're going to contribute to another resource that is going to be invaluable for Star Wars fans in the future, whether it's trivia or just having a discussion over coffee, that's, that's quite an honor. Yeah, it's always an honor to write for Star Wars. I always feel very privileged. I, I take it very seriously. You know, I was working uh, last night on a uh, Star Wars project, uh, and I had I had all the books in uh, my office. I just had a ton of books open. I was searching for facts, uh, looking for little things. Uh, you know, I take it I take it very seriously. And you know, when I, the, the love and the care of the intention that goes into a lot of these books, uh, you know, f- fans do know that and they appreciate that. So I always, I always think of that when I'm writing. Most certainly. And it, and it definitely shows in this book, which we've had so much fun looking at. And let's look at one of the more prevalent topics in the Star Wars universe, and that would be canon. How much of the book is canon, and why do you think fans are so passionate about this concept? I... The, the concept of canon, Dan, is is to me a. I think it's a misnomer. Uh, it's something I actually don't. I, I, I will say this: uh, I, the way I enjoy Star Wars is not because something is uh, happened in the universe or not sure. uh, regarding an official status. It's you know, Star Wars is a fictional universe to me, and it can tell a lot of stories. Um, and I don't, uh, for me, I, I want to enjoy the story itself. I want to be moved by the emotion, uh, the characters and whether something is, uh, canon or not. Canon is a religious term too. It's, it, yes. I don't know how it got applied to science fiction, <laughs> but, uh, I, I, I just, I, I feel sometimes that fans can get a little bit too uh, focused on, on, on that and, and not too much like why are we consuming Star Wars in the first place are we not doing it to enjoy it or are we doing it because we have to and we need to find out what really happened um, that's just my, uh, my, my, my take on it I, I, I think the best thing is t- when you're writing a book is to go for the most authentic Star Wars experience yes. uh, and, and to make it as authentic to the spirit of the films, to that feeling of adventure, uh, the, the humor that's inherent in the films, uh, the joy, uh, victory over evil, those, those themes. I think that's really the most important part of what makes a great Star Wars story rather than references to previous uh, texts or, or continuity. And, and by the way, I do my homework and I work very hard to get all that stuff right. So I'm not dismissing that at all. But th- at least that's, that's just what I feel about, about sure. uh, the idea of canon. <laughs> sure. No, hey, it's very well said. Yes, um, actually, Corey and I talked recently about canon. That It's actually literary. It's a literary term, but it originally was a theological term. So I, I, I really like your answer on that. And you mentioned the research and the, the time and the energy you put into this. It's important, of course. We take Star Wars seriously, but we don't take ourselves too seriously. So we do have a lot of fun in this universe, which clearly you did when you were creating this work. So you mentioned the sources of the films and the, the animated series. What particular sources did you also look at when you were asked to look at something specific? And how much power and authority did you have as an author to kind of create as you went along? Yeah, you know, I don't know how much I... I might have invented a, a couple of things. I, I had actually fun with uh, Harris Headtails. Yes. You go to the Harris spread, yes. there's there's a bit on Twi'lek uh, Leku language. The Leku are the Headtails of the tw- Twi'leks. Hmm. And I got to kind of g- give her speech, right, and, and, and design how a Twi'lek would say... Things like "I love you" or "Go away" or "You're dead," um, <laughs> and that was that, that's pure invention, and it works fantastic in a book like uh, Star Wars: Absolutely Everything You Need to Know because it's visual, it's mm-hmm. short, it's sweet, and you wouldn't be able to do it in any other book. So, when you're creating new material, I I think it almost needs to be you need to look at the the, the medium and if it 
works in that medium and it's better in that medium than anything else, then there's your opportunity. Uh, but I, I just, I also, I didn't just, you know, add Easter eggs or whatever just for fun. Uh, I, I, I stayed as true as I could to what had been developed in the past. Right, and I, it's interesting that you mentioned the Hera pitch because that was the one that I, I spoke with my students about and pointed out to them. I'm, I really liked it because it's such a visual concept and it's a visual book. So let's look at the layout of the book. Star Wars, absolutely everything you need to know, is an, an excellent resource, and clearly there's information there, but the visuals are quite stunning as well. How much did you know about the format from the beginning, and how did you feel when you first saw your work in, in person? Well, I just actually grabbed my copy here, uh, and uh, I, I, I was just given, a, you know, I was just told to, to put it all together in a document. So I didn't know what it would lo- look like, per se. I, I know we had some sample spreads that were made, so I had an idea. But uh, the graphic designers took it from there, and they did such a tremendous job with the book. Uh, I know kids these days, you know, you, you, you can't uh, go, go, you can't skimp on visuals. You know, it needs to be busy, it needs to be active, and wow, DK, I mean, they really went overboard in, in how they laid out some of these pages. I'm just, I'm so stunned, and it's, you know, it's a testament to graphic design, uh, and, and that, that's half this book. <laughs> right. So, uh, the graphic designers definitely have a uh, have a big role to play in, in how this book looks and how good it is. And when I saw the cover at, at Star Wars Celebration, um, I I was like, "Wow, it it's fantastic! It really pops. It has this uh, almost three dimensional uh, sheen to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Yoda's in the front. It's just a wonderful cover. It really really catches your eye. Kind of has this ethereal hyperspace quality about it that. It draws you in, and in the book itself, the way it's laid out, and you mentioned the graphic design department at DK, they they certainly knocked it out of the park with this one. Just the little snippets they have and the information, it almost reminds me of, and I'm not sure if any of our listeners will remember this, our older ones will, but it reminds me of the VH1 pop-up video style. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's got a lot of great information. And You mentioned Hera. What were some of the other uh, pages that you worked on that stood out to you that you really enjoyed writing? I'm sure you enjoyed all of it, but there, there had to be some that are near and dear to your heart. Yeah, you know, um, what What else? I it, it, Sometimes it's actually hard to tell because there was, uh, like, a couple of panels would be moved to another page. Let's say lightsaber combat. I think Adam and I both wrote about the, the, the seven forms of lightsaber con- uh, combat. and. Yes. Ours got kind of combined and added to another page. So uh, sometimes it's hard to tell exactly what's yours and what's not. Mm-hmm. You have to go by memory, which is always a faulty uh, thing. <laughs> Tricky. But, yeah, I, I, you know what I love to do? Uh, I loved Callus, Agent Callus. He's, I write the Star Wars Rebels books, uh, yes. the junior novels and chapter books. And I, Callus, if you've read those, he... He he's kind of the villain of the uh, of the series, mm-hmm. and I really I really like his character. So I had a, I actually requested him. Uh, I traded with Adam, who I didn't know Adam was on the book at the time, but I traded the Inquisitor for Agent Callus because nice. I just I just really like you know this uh, Imperial cop, this FBI agent, mm-hmm. basically ISB agent, uh, who's who's hunting down these rebels. And I, I did remember. Some things from uh, back in the day in the West End Games Imperial Sourcebook where they developed the Imperial Security Bureau. Uh, and they had, they, they kind of broke it down and they, it, it's very technical, very bureaucratic. But I got to actually add some of the bureaucracy into his background. Uh, so if you, if you look at the Callus spread, you might notice some things from the, uh, the, the old uh, West End games, like the, the top six ISB branches. And it's you know material like this that's not story-based, that's very good, that kind of remains with Star Wars uh, you know, uh, th- you know, throughout, uh, regardless of the change in uh, the idea of uh, legends and also... Uh, the, you know, the new canon, so to say. Sure. And uh, Callus is one of my favorites as well. He, I, it's refreshing to have an Imperial officer that's not just a, a caricature of, of, of a, the prototype of a typical sinister villain, but I think that, especially with your writing too, 
you add some dimension to Callus that, that I really appreciate and, and, and enjoy as a fan. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, I, I, I actually end uh, Battle to the End, which is the last book in the Rebel series. I end with his, I start the book in his point of view and I ended it in his, in his point of view. Uh, so uh, I, he, he sees Vader for the first time. And oh, I think wow. uh, that was kind of a fun moment to write. An, an awesome, awesome experience that must be. I can't wait to devour that. So you talked about a lot of things that you have enjoyed, uh, and I'm sure challenges are something that you enjoy as well. What are some of the bigger challenges you faced in this process? Uh, the biggest challenge, Dan, was gathering the information, and uh, we it couldn't just be facts, okay? It had to be facts with a spin on it. They needed to be exciting, shocking. Uh, they needed to to kind of grab your attention. If you're a kid, you want to know what's gross. You want to know what's uh, repulsive. You want to know what's astounding. You want to know all the exclamation points, right, uh, in about a fact. And, and that's that's kind of how I, uh, I took my charge to, to to figure out how to write and how to pick what I needed. And they were always asking for things like that, uh, the the DK editors. So that was that was the challenge of the book. Uh, it, it was also a challenge to find things like the numbers. Um, if you notice, there are numbers on every spread, mm-hmm. and uh, because we we couldn't really use. A lot of the material that had been developed before, uh, which was in a way uh, good because we, you get bogged down with it, but it was also difficult to actually come up with numbers, and you didn't know what was, um, you know, what was true or not anymore. And, and, and you, you actually noticed a lot of discrepancies in the former universe between sizes and lengths and what what one author wrote while another author wrote another number so it it was it was that was that was a challenge to to find and you know sometimes i would spend an hour or two just looking for the numbers on a spread and that's just one little box so right and it, it's staggering the, uh, the amount of it's just like when i'm talking to my students about preparing a, an essay or a paper of some sort you have to be organized in your thoughts you have to know where you've been in your material and you have to have a clear vision which clearly you and your co-authors have and, it, and it's a great resource for Star Wars fans we, we really love the book I know you met Mediocre Jedi uh, on Force Friday he reviewed the book for us and um, had a great time doing so uh, well, let's talk a bit about some of your other projects you have going on and that you're allowed to speak on hey it's Dan Z and Corey Club from Coffee with Kenobi. And we are excited to let you know about the Star Wars Card Trader app from Tops. Yeah, Dan, you remember those cards that came out in 1977, the good old days? Well, they're back oh, yes. again. Yeah, so it's the Star Wars Card Trader app. It has them all, as well as fantastic images from The Force Awakens, The Clone Wars, Rebels, and much more. Absolutely. You've got your favorite characters, memorable scenes. You've got key moments. It's all there. You get credits every day for free from the app, which is available for, from iTunes or Google Play. Open packs from the cantina, trade with your friends, and enjoy these amazing Star Wars memories as you take your first step into a larger world. There are so many different sets to choose from also, and there's so many great cards to chase. There's special inserts, there's rewards for completing sets and variants. It's everything you love in collecting from a galaxy far, far away. The Star Wars Digital Card Trader Collecting App from Tops. These are the cards you're looking for. Yeah, well, I can tell you... Uh, my my big book is Empire of the Wolf, which came out from Alterna Comics. was published. It's a graphic novel on ancient Roman werewolves. It's a uh, book I would love everybody to read. You know, it's it's kind of the crossover book uh, from Star Wars to ancient Rome. If you love mythology, yes. if you love the story of Romulus and Remus, if you love uh, werewolves, okay. It has it all in there, and it's actually drawn by two uh, Star Wars artists, uh, Dan Parsons, who inked uh, over a hundred issues of the Star Wars comics for Dark Horse, and then also uh, David Rabbit, who's a noted illustrator for the Star Wars Insiders and and Star Wars Insider and the Topps Trading Cards um, sketch cards. He, both of them, they did just a tremendous job in 
building the mythology of ancient Rome through through visuals, and that was a great story to write. It's you know it's av- available on EmpireOfTheWolf.net, and also of course on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, uh, anywhere you can uh, Comicsology, anywhere you can get comics, it's it's available. Also, your comic book store too. And uh, next up, I have uh, two two books that are coming out. Uh, I did the uh, Batman versus Superman. Uh, junior companion novel, that's what they're calling it. Um, I can't really talk much about it, but sure. it should be really exciting uh, because it's associated with the new Zack Snyder film. Wow. Uh, I think that'll come out next year, hopefully in February. Don't quote me on that. But, uh, <laughs> and I also have, uh, I did the junior novel to novelizations, uh, novelization to Star Wars Episode Seven. So I am really excited for that to come out too. So people are basically thinking, I have got to talk to Michael Kogi like real soon because you've basically got uh, your finger on the pulse of two of the most anticipated films in the next year. Yeah, I mean... (laughs) (laughs) Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. It's so much fun. I, I, I will say this. When you're in the trenches... You're not thinking like that. You're just thinking, I got a deadline, I got to get this done. Sure. Uh, and you're working really hard to make that book the best you can. So uh, the the whole idea of, you know, you're invested with so much responsibility. You know, like a lot of people, are there. You, you, you can feel, feel people cheering for you because they want Star Wars books to be good. Uh, but you you have that it's it's quite humbling too to be so close to material that is going to influence and inspire a a, a lot of people around the world uh, and you're somehow part of it. it, it it's just really an amazing uh, feeling. It's staggering and it's wonderful. It, it's it is we say it almost on every show. It's just a wonderful time to be a Star Wars fan and and people like you, Michael, uh, make it so great because you're passionate about Star Wars and you're passionate about your art and we really appreciate that. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you so much, Dan. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I love the show, and uh, it sounds like, what, what grade do you teach? I teach freshmen in high school, and I also teach seniors. Oh, fantastic. You teach English, social I te- studies? I teach English. Right now we're focusing on British literature, and I have a composition class that I teach as well through uh, through the junior college. So, yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. Oh, great. That, that sounds uh, fantastic. Well, tell the uh, students to, of course, keep reading. That's the most important thing, right? And that's that's what the new Star Wars Reads Day is c- coming up uh, this weekend is about. I'll be at the Denver uh, Public Library. They, they won a contest where I was invited to go uh, speak and read at their library for Star Wars Reads Day. So I'm very excited about that, and I'm sure... Uh, kids all across the country are excited about Star Wars Reads Day. It's really important that we we push reading, um, even if it's through Star Wars, especially if it's through Star Wars, to to young boys and young girls, uh, so that they can be inspired to to read other books too, uh, like mm-hmm. the classics. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, we're having a huge Star Wars Reads Day event here at the high school where I teach, and Star Wars and and literacy is just a, a beautiful combination of, of two things that, that, you know, when you use something that students are passionate about, you get that buy-in, that engagement that is so important for students, and it's always a great thing. Yeah, it, it, it is. It is. I agree with you there, Dan. And so uh, before we let you go, I see your coffee's getting low. There are five questions that we ask each of our guests here on Coffee with Kenobi to kind of find the commonalities we have as fans. And we'll start with the first one, Michael. What is your favorite Star Wars movie? My favorite Star Wars movie is probably Star Wars, but close to Empire. I like both of them. Probably Star Wars because it was the first. Absolutely. You can't have Empire without Star Wars. No, you can't. No, you can't. Who or what is your favorite character? My favorite character is C-3PO. Nice, nice, very nice. What is your favorite line of dialogue or film moment? I love the scene. There are two scenes from the original film, Star Wars. I really like Luke and his uncle and aunt just eating dinner. Um, and then I, I, I really like the scene between when Obi-Wan's telling Luke about the Force in his hut. And um, I, I think that that scene 
just kind of opens up the entire world of Star Wars within less than a minute of dialogue, and you're suddenly introduced to this whole world. And the music that's playing, um, the the just performance by Alec Guinness in that film, especially in that scene, he makes it all come alive, and he makes it real. And that that is better than any special effect. Nice. Oh, I agree. And I was I was just reflecting on that scene actually with my students. We were watching. We were watching Star Wars, and after we looked at King Arthur, and it's uh, it's very powerful, very poignant. If you collect, what is your favorite Star Wars collectible that you own? I, I, I actually don't collect a lot because I don't have a lot of space anymore, but uh, I have a... I, I like to collect Star Wars art, and I have a uh, McQuarrie, Ralph McQuarrie... Uh, poster or small poster picture that's signed from 1978 so that was that's pretty pretty cool wow that's uh that's like steve sansweet worthy <laughs> yeah yeah it's it's my it's my my big star wars and it's of the two droids so it's it's one of those portfolio there used to be this thing called the star wars portfolio where sure. they came with all these uh i think an eight by not 11 but eight by 14 or 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 some size like that a, a prince of his various paintings and illustrations from the first Star Wars movie and uh, this one he signed so that's it's very special that's beautiful yeah I know exactly the image you're talking about so Michael last one what particular messages or themes about the Star Wars saga resonate or speak to you I love the idea of the, the basic triumph of good over evil I you know in in an era where everything most media that people consume now and stories it's about grittiness it's about darkness it's about people that are on the side of gray what i love about star wars is that it it is there is a goodness in the world and even in the darkest moments there's hope right and you you can never give up you need to be persistent and i think and persevere and i think that's probably the best theme about star wars that i can think of Agreed, and thank you for saying that. It's it's the uh, the cynicism and the dystopian stories that are popular and have their own place, to be sure. But it, sure. it's refreshing that Star Wars has this idea of hope and believing in something greater than what's in front of you and, and fighting for what is right and not being so negative about the world. It, it's one of the things that I think has always brought me back to Star Wars and something that I pass on to my children as well. Yeah, I, I think it's really important to... to I mean, those those themes often seem they're very they're very simple, and uh, they seem saccharine, perhaps. Mm-hmm. But when done well, you know they are unbeatable, and they can be very profound too. Um, so it, it's important to remember that and, and not dismiss them uh, in this age of dystopian fantasy or it's true or gritty gritty you know hard re- uh, hard realism. And, and it is definitely true that I, I learn as I grow older and the more experiences I have both with students and with children, and I'm sure you agree just being a man of the world as you are, that the world can be such a gray place. Uh, so that there are strong moments of good and strong moments of bad and that you can actually tell the difference between the two. I think that is something that uh, every child hopefully will gravitate towards because I'm getting a little didactic here, but I think there's really a lot of importance in that. Yeah, you know, and I think it, uh, when, when we make uh, films or when we write books about people doing bad deeds um, and then we glamorize them, I, 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 I don't you, – you have to have the willpower and the, the moral compass in yourself to realize that that is not – especially children, that's not how you should act. And in fact, being good – and doing the right thing is often the harder thing. It's the harder thing to do. It can be the less rewarding thing immediately, uh, but it's the most important thing to do to build a stable society and to, and to have a good life, I think. Absolutely, absolutely. I couldn't have said it better myself. That is, that is a, a great thing to leave our listeners with. So, Michael, before we let you go, how can people get in touch with you if they want to ask you a question or just say hello? Uh, well, they can reach me at michaelkogie.com. That's M-I-C-H-A-E-L-K-O-G-G-E. That's M-I-C-H-A-E-L-K-O-G-G-E.com. Or at Michael Kogi 
on Twitter. Both of those are, are perfect arenas uh, to, to follow me and, and, and figure out what's going next. And uh, a lot of exciting things in the future, as you know. And Dan, I just want to say thank you to you and all your listeners for giving me this wonderful uh, opportunity to talk to you guys about Star Wars uh, and just converse as a fan uh, also. It's, it's This is so much fun, and, and thank you very much. Oh, my goodness. Well, thank you, Michael. Uh, Michael Kogi, ladies and gentlemen, a, a, a wonderful author, Star Wars fan, and someone we'd definitely love to have on in the future to dissect and analyze the Star Wars saga with us. Michael, thank you again so much for being a guest on Coffee with Kenobi, and have a wonderful night. You too, Dan. Take care. From Tops comes the all-new digital card collecting app, free to download from iTunes or Google Play, Star Wars Card Trader. For the first time ever, collect and trade everything from legendary 1977 Star Wars cards to new cards featuring exclusive content from Star Wars Episode Seven: The Force Awakens. All from the comfort of your mobile devices, Star Wars Card Trader. These are the cards you're looking for. Chewie, get us out of here! If you would like to respond to our question of the show, have a comment, or just want to say hello, send us an email or mp3 at feedback at coffeewithkenobi.com. Or if you have a specific question or comment for either of us individually, email us at danz at coffeewithkenobi.com or coreyc at coffeewithkenobi.com. Or visit us at coffeewithkenobi.com and click on the Contact Us section or comment on one of the stories featured on the site. If you enjoy the show, please write a review in iTunes or Stitcher. You can also like the show on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash coffee with Kenobi, as well as keep up to date at our Twitter feed at coffee with Kenobi. You can also find us on Tumblr at coffee with Kenobi at tumblr.com. We enjoy the jazz music. The album is Eye to Eye by Steve Torak. Give the evacuation code signal. This podcast is not endorsed by the Walt Disney Company or Lucasfilm Limited. It is intended for entertainment and informational purposes only. The official Star Wars website can be found at www.starwars.com. Star Wars, all names, sounds, and any other Star Wars-related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Disney and their respective trademark and copyright holders. All original content of this podcast is the intellectual property of Coffee with Kenobi unless otherwise indicated. This is the podcast you're looking for. There's no one here. Move along. Move along.